I built a wind tunnel in my garage to put really cool things in it. But right now, there's a problem with it. That problem is this right here. That shouldn't be doing that. It should be much more smooth. And so today, on the wind channel tunnel, we're gonna try to fix that with 3D printing. I want to design a laminar flow block to be able to put in the back of the wind tunnel to improve the airflow of the smoke in the wind tunnel. However, I don't know if my idea is gonna work, but I'm excited to find out. Here's how I think we're gonna be able to pull this off. I'm gonna take some measurements of the space of where the laminar flow block is gonna go. I'm gonna put them in some CAD software, and I'm gonna take that CAD software, put it in a 3D printer slicer, print it, and hopefully, hopefully it works. There's three problems that I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix. First is uh, the holes for the laminar flow block. I don't know exactly how to do that. I want them to be straight. I want them to be perfectly spaced. I want it to take up as little filament as possible because that brings to our second problem. I only have one roll of filament and I don't wanna buy another one. And so uh, my original idea was to be able to print all the pieces to get the measurements right and then do the do the laminar flow block. I don't have enough filament, so I, I'm just gonna send it. And the third problem I have is the space where the laminar block needs to go. I think it's too big uh, for, my, for my 3D print uh, print bed. And so I'm gonna have to figure out how to design something to be able to make it into pieces to then put it in the wind tunnel, uh, put it together, but also like make it be tight. So I have the dimensions of the laminar flow block and I'm going to put them into my CAD software. Essentially what's going on is there's five blocks that I'm gonna make and I'm gonna fit them all together in the wind tunnel and we're going to hopefully have a laminar flow block. So I have the five pieces that I need, measured them and I've put them in my CAD software. So now all I need to do is figure out how to make the holes for the air to flow through in the wind tunnel. And I have thought about this idea quite a bit. Uh, and truth be told, I've kind of tinkered with this idea. This is half of one of the block, or this is a quarter of one of the blocks that I was gonna make. It took half the roll of filament. And I quickly realized that this is not the way to do this, that there has to be an easier way because these spaces in between these little walls right here on all the corners are, uh, they're about two to three millimeters thick. And what that means is that the 3D printer has to fill in all of this and it's too small to have the infill fill it in. And so this thing is very, very solid, very strong, but very solid. And so I need to figure out because I only have one roll of filament, how to make this less dense. So I need a different way to accomplish this goal. And I came across a infill coaster set uh, online and in it there was a video that was attached to it and basically said you take whatever object you have so in here I have a little square we're going to center it we're going to zoom in and to find the infill and to do what you want to do with the infill you go to slice plate and then you go to strength and then that's where you can add your infill pattern so I want to do hexagons because hexagons are the best agons Click slice again, and then it'll show us the, the design on the inside for the infill. So right now we have a 5% infill. So let's, uh, let's make these holes smaller. Let's go to a 10% infill. And we'll slice it again. There we go. That is a lot better. Towards then you'll take the top shell layers and you'll go all the way down to zero. And you'll do the same thing with the bottom shell layers and you'll slice again. And then this, this cube is what we're left with and it has infill already designed for us. So now what we're going to do is take our blocks that we've measured specifically for the wind tunnel, put them in here, take away the top and the bottom layer, add the infill percentage that we want to, press print, wait for it to be done. Here's what we're rocking with. So we have five pieces uh, that are hopefully gonna fit in the wind tunnel. Um, we have these like that. Look at that, mm, see right through there. It's, gosh, they're beautiful. So this is a 5% infill. Um, and then this guy is a 7% infill. And the drastic difference between the two is insane. Look at that. 
absolutely insane. I did not expect that. Having this in my hands in the different percentage of 5% infill and like 7% infill is gonna help me a ton when designing this front side. I want the front side to be 10% infill the whole way across instead of switching between the two. But honestly, I don't know if it's gonna matter on the back side, um, but that's what we're here to find out, huh? Um, you, you should go, you should go here. All right, so I wrote on these to try to remember which, which one goes where. This one says bottom right. So that means this one is bottom left. Oh boy, come on, yes, yes. Nice snug fit, okay. The middle part, arguably the most important. Oh, perfect. Okay, top left. Let's see how this goes. Oh, 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 come on. Yes. Top right. A little bit looser, but not by much. That's, that's pretty awesome if I say so myself. Moment of truth time. Here's the before. And now here's the after. Interesting. So I think what's happening is that because there is a better or there's more airflow restriction, it's making it drop down. However, if we raise it, it should raise it. Okay. So that answers my question. This may not matter as much as I thought it was going to because all this around here, that needs to be fixed. So in the next video, that's what we're gonna tackle. We're gonna tackle 3D printing the laminar flow on the front side to see if we can get this air flowing as smoothly as we can so we can put some really cool things in this wind tunnel that I made in my garage. Honestly, this, this project was less about if this actually worked and more about me learning how to make this come to life. It's been in my head for a long time, uh, but now that it's a real product, I've learned so much. So that way when I create this laminar flow block, I can learn from here, like this infill pattern, for instance. I love the hexagons because they're the best of gons, but I don't love how much space there is here. And so that taught me a lot of what I need to do next. But I wanna know your thoughts. What other upgrades do you think we should make to the wind tunnel? Obviously, this, this needs to be fixed and updated. That's coming in the future. But I need a lot more filament to fix this guy. And then maybe, maybe do I paint this on the outside? I don't know, let me know. But I got a lot of fun ideas. One of them being at the end of every video, I'm going to show you something that I have on hand, uh, I don't know. Let's take this plane for instance, that I'm going to invite you guys to tell me how we should put this in the wind tunnel. Like, do we put it straight up? Do we put it sideways? Do we put it upside down? Do we put it upside down and straight up? I wanna know your thoughts because I want this to be really fun for all of us. Uh, I wanna look back on this YouTube channel and think of all the fun things that went in this DIY wind tunnel. Uh, and I want your help to make that happen. If you think that's interesting, subscribe, because honestly, we're just getting started with this thing and I am very excited to share it with you, the internet. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Let me know in the comments what I should do next.